Hello friends. My name is Ekaterina Abramova. I wanted to introduce myself a little bit. Then my plan is to give you some ideas for our Kupala celebration rituals at the Fireflies Forest, Tennessee, Jamestone. And that night will be very, very important for every one of us. And uh, I will explain what is this all about. And also why I'm wearing this, what you see on me. Okay, so first introduction and why I'm doing that. Why I'm leading this ceremony. So um, long story short, I'm artist, practic practitioner, yeah? I'm just practicing my art as a visual artist. I do paintings. And for many years I was learning on different, different symbols and mythology and traveling in different countries where the culture preserved. Like I was living in India for many years and learning a lot of there and going to different museums, archaeological museums and folk art museums and was working with one museum in Goa. Um, Chitra Museum, if you can Google it. So this research and practicing together, painting those things, painting those symbols, painting those goddesses and gods, spirits and entities. Of course, it was giving me a lot of insights as a practitioner, yeah, not the theor theorists. And these insights I'm using now to create this beautiful experience that we will be all together and this beautiful forest and beautiful nature in Jamestown. So we will create Kupala ceremony. Um, a little bit more about me, come back to <laughs> introduction, is my background, education, my college of art was about folk art, all the crafts and folk art, and what is behind, the symbols behind the folk art. After that, I went to Imperial Academy of Arts and continued my education as a theater artist, but mainly was focused on my paintings, learning and finding my voice. I came back to the folk art, to kind of primordial things, to the archetypal things, to the archaical things that are most pure and don't have any frequencies from the the um, things that are negative, <clears throat> say like that. So saying that, you need to understand that I am not professional um, leader or director of the movie or creator of the celebrations. It's not my uh, piece of cake. At least it was not my piece of cake. I was only doing paintings and celebrating celebrating these people rituals physically in bali in india in different ashrams in united arab emirates because i'm artist i was able to the art was able to open doors to me that for kind of tourists and just people travelers are not open so this gives me the knowledge that i want to share with you Kupala ceremony, I was celebrating with knowledgeable people in Russia in the forest twice in my life, before I immigrated to the United States. And when I was living in India, I found a lot of similar things, similar celebrations, similar mindsets, similar beliefs with the Slavic Russian, uh, Slavic old cultures and celebrations and rituals. So similar, like a line. And then, of course, it gives me an idea, how about other cultures? How about Native Americans? Because I'm in America. And I found a lot of similar things as well. So <clears throat> when we say that Kupala is uh, from Slavic tribes, which is a huge amount of people on Earth, it's not only Russia, it's many, many countries that celebrating Kupala. And when we will celebrate it from Saturday till Sunday morning, we will have this experience together with other cultures and other peoples that celebrating the same time, the same rituals in different places in the world. 
it's so important because we uniting and we have no borders of the uh, cultures and um, restrictions we, we are free we are free to celebrate things that are important for tons and tons and tons of people all over the world so we are not celebrating russian culture or some other culture we're just taking this rituals as an example as a guidance as a, something that knowledgeable that proved by thousands 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 years celebration and I was doing my research, I was listening a lot of um, people who created those um, events, their opinions, uh, physically talk to them on phone, uh, whatever I can find, uh, watching a lot of documentaries. So you can do it in English and on YouTube and find uh, something more for yourself to celebrate it fully. But here shortly, I will introduce you to main things that we will do. So I'm wearing this crown, yeah, with flowers, roots, which is plastic. I'm wearing it is not as an example. I'm wearing it is for you to have this um, celebration mood, to be excited, to go and fully participate with your open heart and having the full experience as much as you can. Like squeeze this experience, these experiences, rituals for your own benefits. Your body benefits, your mind benefits, your psyche benefits, your soul benefits, your heart benefits. And this is very available. It, you can take it, you can really have it all. Um, so we will have, all of us, we will need to make ourselves, or your partner can make for you, the, the girl, your woman, your wife, your partner can make for you, wave the roots from the plants and herbs and leaves that we will find at the at the location in the gemstone and um, we will wear them the whole day saturday oh of course you can make them friday but most likely they will need little water to keep them alive because it's not plastic like here it's real plants so better i suggest you to do them and the daytime Saturday, I will explain, I will be there with you. It will be the station to make them uh, these beautiful crowns, but real crowns, not from plastic. We will wear white clothes. That's why I wear my dress that I bought specially. I never wear it before. I wear it now here at home for the video and I will wear it at the celebration. So it's a new dress. I suggest you to have any white dress for women with a long skirt and for men yeah of course pants and top the t-shirt or better short uh with long sleeve whatever you can find actually you can visit some salvation army or something and find for you um good clothes there so it will be recyclable and we will not be consumerism consumerists <laughs> yeah so this being said this is very important how we look because, first of all, when we do this all together, it gives so beautiful scenery. And we will have light, we will have the fun, of course. And this kind of the costumes that we will wear will give us more energy, yeah? Celebration and energy, like it's something special and I'm wearing special clothes. So I am respectful to do what we are doing, what I am doing, what I am here for, yeah? So I want to ask your uh, um, support because as I told you, I'm not um, like professionally trained to lead the ceremonies, but I have this mission absolutely clear to me to continue doing them. And thank you so much, Kahel, to be open to do it first time at Jiva Day, and before that, in uh, <clears throat> other celebrations, and it's opened big world for me. I felt like my ancestors connected umbilical cord to my stomach, to my belly, and guiding me every day. And it's so important, so beautiful. So I wish you to have this experience as well. Connect with your umbilical cord, cord, sorry, 
uh, with your ancestors. They will give you guidance, love, help, wisdom, protection, support. This you can create at the night of Kupala. Kupala is the god, god of the sun, part of the sun. And this night, uh, the sun is very powerful. And we have everything activated by the sun. So this, the ancestors said the sun is the masculine and the earth, the mother earth is the feminine. So this couple united in this night. Our ancestors uh, suggest to not sleep this night. So get some napping, have some, maybe a, a short sleep in the daytime, or maybe you sleep a little bit longer in the morning. So you have a power and energy to keep going the whole night. It's very important as well. Um, so it's about love. This night is about love. The married couple um, giving a power to their marriage, to their fertility, to their sexual life, to their relationship and connection. Newly, newly cu couples, they will uh, have this strong unity. And this also called marriage of the fire that represent the sun and the water that represent the earth, a feminine. Also meditate on that, think about that. Um, so what else I need to say? We will do, it will be a schedule that you will see. We will try to do everything on time it, because the program is very intense in that night. So you will need to have the, your waving roots, then white clothes, then uh, I suggest to not eat so much because then you will feel sleepy. Uh, yeah, have some good lunch, but don't eat in the evening or some snacks uh, because it will keep your energy, drink a lot of water. Um, then what we will do on the stage before the ritual starting, I will explain more and I will give you the legend, the story about this Kupala, how it came to the folks, to the uh, peoples, and what is represent more like a legend, like mythology wise. Then we will have scheduled different, different activities. We will uh, have a representative a representation of the masculine it is a kupala scarecrow we will build it together most of the men will be participating to building this giant man that representing the sun and the women will decorate the, the young tree that representing the purity of the woman a feminine and the woman the feminine part a feminine energy will lead this, uh, the procession with the young tree and the man, the masculine, will lead the procession to place the kupala, place the effigy, scarecrow, to the fire. We will have a bread to give to the spirits. We give it to the fire. We will have some words to say, some prayers. Before that, each of you put in your wreaths, your flower crown, a small paper where you will write all your intentions and you put it inside and you wear it the whole day so you kind of charge that intentions with your antennas with your being and then after that when the bonfire will be lit and fire will be beautifully activated we will offer things to the fire to the spirits to the goddesses and gods to the creator and we will give our wreaths our crowns that made out of the plants yeah leaves and herbs and flowers that we will find at the location we will give it together with the paper that they hidden there to the fire then we will give the young part part of the young tree to the fire as a sacrifice to the feminine energy to activate the feminine energy and marry this to oppositus masculine and feminine in the i'm sorry in a harmony so of course we will have performances we will have people singing we will have dance around the fire 
I will be there with you. We, I will be explaining you the dance around the fire, how we will do that. We will have a lot of fun. You will be open to receive whatever you're ready to receive, all positive and energetically very powerful um, frequencies, healings, because this night also about healings. You can put in your intention some, pro uh, some problems that you have in your house as well. So it will be given to the fire and activated there and the problems will disappear. This is how my ancestors believe in it. And that's why it's keep going for so many, so many thousands of years. Even now, people in Kupala night celebrating this night. So many people doing that till now. Christianity came, wanted to re ruin that, uh, mix the Christianity with Kupala ceremonies. It was a lot of things going on, but still it is pure celebration that we will do purely how it was a thousand years ago and how it's now. Same. Okay, what I need to say more. Um, after the dance around the fire, yeah, and giving the offerings, we will jump, we will jump over the fire and married couples or partners holding each other's hands and jumping together. You can jump with your child, three of you, or with your friend, maybe uh, with your sister, with your mother, maybe it's your spiritual sister, your spiritual family, but jump together, hold each other's hands and don't leave them. Just go together. Do it alone to overcome your fear. Give yourself intention before you jump. You will have this power of the overcoming your fear, overcoming your obstacles to have this freedom. And of course your intention will come truly and comes true. After that, when the fire is going down, we will have uh, a little time to prepare the a road, coal road. We will walk on a coal that is still hot and still alive. It's a live road. It's it's moving. It's it's giving a sound. It's talking to you. It's smell. It's it's something sacred. It's something very mysterious. Something very new for you. Even you did it before. Every time it's new. I did it twice. Every time it was like I never did it before. We will have all the um safety don't worry about that you will have help if something happened but usually nothing happened with your feet nothing burned if you do the instructions that i will give before we start walking on the calls okay after that we will have amazing beautiful sacred ritual again so it's step by step it's the whole night yeah, we go closer to the lake. It will be closer to the um, sunrise because it's important to meet the sun, the new sun meeting them, helping him to rise. I'm saying him because it's representing the masculine. And after that, we will move the wheel fired, leaded from the hill to the lake representing the sun and the time spinning in our lives also representing reincarnation because slavic tribes and all you know all the um asian tribes and asian peoples who preserve the culture they all believe in reincarnation all of them that's why it's also unite them one of the aspects so this wheel spinning will absolutely full of fire will go down from the hill to the lake representing this marriage again and the time in your life that give your life fully to the people be yourself alive every moment with every your breath with your excellent in health you have certain amount of that breath and take it fully with consciousness and then we will have a beautiful arc that we are inside the lake that we will walk through this arc is representing new life that all the cleansing 
all the purification you did. The last will be the water, the feminine, the mother, connecting to earth, the waters of the earth, the juice of the earth. We will walk through this arc inside the lake and swim and baptize ourselves with the nature. Having the nature support, having the spirit of the place supporting us. And I would love to ask your support. Believe in your own healing. Be present every moment. Have this experience fully. Remove your ego for one night at least and celebrate with us the marriage between sky and the earth, the marriage between water and the fire, the marriage between you and your partner, the marriage between your masculine part with your feminine part, balancing this all together with nature and together with every people that are around you, loving each other, giving each other support, especially in a road call, call road. <laughs> I'm Russian, yeah? <laughs> um, we will give so much support to each other that each person who is walking, all of us will give the support. Can you imagine how much you will be charged by this night? You don't need any substance to enjoy that. This is also one suggestion. This one night, don't take any medicine, any substance. Drink water and make it as your substance, the pure energy substance because it will open your portals, your heart, your chest, your feet will be open because it's acupuncture points when you walk in a call, activating. The healing all your body, all your meridians, all your auras, all the bodies that you have in your body. And collectively, it's magic, big magic. Thank you all. I love you all and I'm very, very happy this happened in my life and um, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it as more beautiful as we can and we can do it only together. And I also need your support very much to, to make it happen the way we want it and more and better. And the same time, the way the spirits, the sun, the Kupala, and his sister Kostroma will allow us and bless us. And I'll tell you the story about Kupala and Kostroma at the Fireflies Forest Saturday evening, daytime. Love you. Take a look at the schedule, prepare your clothes, prepare yourself, and see you soon.